All right, so today we're going to take a look at the Doppler effect. And this is um, a topic that I really like because the effect of it is just so obvious in daily life. For example, do you know that one iconic race car sound? Yeah, that one. Well, okay, so I'm not a big fan of those race car competitions or whatever, but you can definitely hear it and it's so apparent in our media. And also, when you just go for a run, for instance, when a car zooms past you, it's what you hear. Well, we can actually explain this phenomenon using physics. And even though this is something that I've practically grown up hearing and I've kind of gotten used to it, is it a little bit weird sometimes that when you're in the car, the sound of the car stays constant. However, when you're outside the car and the car is moving relative to you, the sound pitch of the car changes as it passes you. Well, that's because of the Doppler effect. Now, when a vehicle approaches a person, the sound is higher. It's a high-pitched sound. And then as it passes by you and then it leaves you, it becomes a low-pitched sound. So imagine this. You're running and this car is moving towards you and as it moves towards you it has a high pitched sound and it gets lower and lower and lower and then it becomes lower as it goes past you and i guess when it's much further away from you or when it's much you know further away from you on both sides the pitch tends to stay constant when it's moving very close past you you can literally hear the pitch of the car going down and so let's listen to that race car thing again yeah, there is a, the pitch of the car, it goes down, it goes from a higher pitch to a lower pitch. So this is because of the Doppler effect. Now, sound is created by sound waves and vibrations. Imagine the source of the sound is stationary. It's going to create these vibrations and the sound is going to spread out. I know that this isn't a perfect circle, but let's pretend that it is. I drew it myself, so it's obviously really bad. But yeah, they tend to more or less stay the same as it goes out again and again, just like a ripple, right? Like a ripple on the surface of water. And therefore, people standing on either sides of this source will hear the same frequency of sound. Now, this is not the case if the source is moving. If the source moves towards a certain place, even though they're emitting the same exact frequency, note that the circles are about the same side, size as the one that, ones that are here when they're stationary. So take a look at the source moving diagram. The biggest wave on the outermost part is the first wave that was emitted. It was emitted when the source was in the middle of that circle. It spread out to be that big. And it was emitted again and again and again. And each time, the center of this wave got to the side more and more and more. And that's what creates this general pattern. So that's why we get this effect where even though both of these sources are emitting sounds of the same frequency, one side has more squashed waves than the other side, which has more spread waves. And, and so that's why when a source moves towards a person, the sound waves are squashed together and the frequency becomes higher, which makes the pitch higher. Very, very simple. When it's moving away from a person, the waves become spread apart, the wavelength becomes lower, and the pitch becomes lower. And that's exactly what happens. So... Let's take a look at the car going past you again. Now, here's the car, and it's moving past you, and as it's approaching you, the sound waves get squashed together, and you hear a much higher pitched sound. As the car passes you and leaves you, and it gets further and further away from you, the sound waves are stretched apart, and it becomes a lower pitch. Now, when the car is right next to you for a very instantaneous moment, the pitch that you will hear is the exact same pitch that the car is emitting as well. So, you know, that's a pretty simple concept. Now, let's learn about how to make it into an equation. FO is going to be observed frequency. The V is going to represent the speed of the wave. In this case, it's a sound wave. The VS is going to be the speed of the source. And then the FS is going to be the frequency emitted or the frequency of the source. So the S will represent the source. Now what happens here is let's imagine that the sound is emitted over here. 
and it's allowed to travel for one second. It will travel this distance, and we don't know how many distance this is, but we know that whatever this, this length is going to be V, because the speed is the amount of distance traveled per second. So the length traveled within one second equals V, because that's V. And this is basically if the source is stationary. And that means that this is going to be the speed of the wave, how fast the sound wave maybe travels within that particular amount of time. Now, we know very clearly that V is F lambda. And that gives us the equation of lambda is V over F. Okay, so that's good. However, when the source is emitted again and the source actually moves away from the person, you're now going to move an additional this amount. So you move V and then you move this, this amount as well. Let's do this as S. Because this is the distance that the source has moved within one second and therefore it is the velocity of the source and this is just the velocity of the sound as we've already established. In this case, the wavelength is vs plus v so now the v has changed to vs plus v over frequency and do know that this is the frequency of the source so we know that the observed frequency is going to be given by frequency is and we have you have to look at this equation again v over lambda Now, this is the observed wavelength, obviously, because it's like this. And what we see here is that the observed frequency will then require the observed wavelength. And so what happens then is that we take this and we flip it upside down, and then we get the equation where we just flip this, right? That's what you get when you divide something. So you get V times Fs divided by Vs plus V. And that is it. So that's our equation. So finally, this is the equation. Observed frequency is the frequency of the source times the velocity of sound or the speed of, of light or whatever wave that you're trying to calculate. And then you either plus or minus. Why do we plus or minus? Well, this is because as the drawing just shows, if the source moves away from the observer, then you have to add this extra distance to the initial distance, right? However, if the source is moving towards the person, then you have to minus this extra distance from the original distance because the overall distance between the source and the person is just this amount. So you have to either plus or minus, and we can see from these um, drawings that I've done that very clearly, if the source is moving away, then you add together the vol velocities. If the source is moving towards, then you minus the velocities. So moving towards, minus, moving away, plus. And also do note that only relative motion is required for the Doppler effect. So the car can be staying the same. The, he can be staying at the exact same spot. But you can be running and you will still hear that change in frequency as you move towards and then away from the car but that is assuming that you can run fast enough that the the you know audible effects of the doppler effect are actually kind of you know you're able to hear it because you have to run very very fast for that you have to be as fast as a car which is not really that feasible but yes it is possible only relative motion is required for the doppler effect the only reason why we hear it when the car moves past us but not when we run past a car is because we just can't run that fast so yeah i think an easy way to remember this is we know that when a car moves towards us there's higher pitch higher pitch means that there's a higher frequency now, in order to have a higher answer, then you should have a lower denominator. So obviously it's going to be a minus. If you want to have a lower answer, you should have a high denominator and it's going to be a plus. That's how I remembered this. 
So one last part about the Doppler effect that I find personally very interesting is redshift. Now light, which is, they're also waves, right? So light shows the Doppler effect as well. They also get squashed and they also get stretched. We know that light of higher frequencies tend to be purple. They, they go towards the green, the blues, the purples. The lights of lower frequency, of longer wavelengths and lower frequency, they go towards the yellows and the oranges and they move towards the red part of the spectrum. Now, astronomers, they found out that the light from the distant stars, they tend to be slightly more reddish than the light from nearby stars. So what does that mean? It means that the waves are getting stretched. Why are they getting stretched? Because these distant stars are moving away from us. And so this is evidence that the universe is expanding because it's impossible that all of these stars are just moving away from us with the Earth as the center point, right? It's, 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 that's not really possible. So the conclusion that they drew is that the universe is expanding in and of itself not the stars just randomly deciding to go away from the Earth. The reason why stars next to us don't show redshift is because of the gravitational pull between our sun and their sun, so the universe doesn't expand as much between us. And that's what makes the stars and their waves stretch out between on their way to the Earth. And I think that is absolutely fascinating. So that's about it for the Doppler effect. A very simple concept, very easy to calculate, but something that has told us that our entire universe is expanding and also something that we just hear in all parts of life. Thank you for watching. And if you want more videos on similar levels of physics, then do check out my channel where I also post other A-level physics videos. Again, thank you for watching.